About 8,000 years ago, a man's jawless head was impaled on a stake and then stuck upright in the waters of a lake for all to see. A gruesome warning to anyone that saw it, no doubt. How do we know this? Because in 2012, archaeologists discovered his skull at the bottom of a small lake in what is now east-central Sweden. Not only that, it seems one other person had been on similarly grisly display, and at least ten other adults and an infant had been deposited in the lake below them. We'll most likely never know the reasons for the violence these deposits suggest, whether it be ritual or conflict, nor the purpose of the threatening lake surface exhibition. And the whole thing is complicated by the fact that the remains were deposited in a deliberately arranged wood and stone structure in the water, alongside remains of brown bear, wild boar and other species. In other words, it's another case of go figure. However, out of all this mystery, all this confusion of evidence, one thing has emerged with stunning clarity. The face of the man whose skull was placed on that stake all those years ago. What you can see now is the result of a painstaking reconstruction that started with putting back together the original skull, then CT scanning it, 3D printing it, genetics, and the forensic modelling of facial muscles and skin. Oscar Nielsen, a forensic artist based in Sweden, used this skull as well as genetic and anatomical information gleaned from it to create a bust of the man, a blue-eyed, brown-haired and pale-skinned individual in his fifties. It's all too easy when we can see something like this that each and every one of us can relate to as a human being to then very quickly take for granted the fact that reconstructions like this can be done at all. To get from this broken remains at the bottom of a lake to this is an astonishing achievement, a bringing together by so many people of so many strands of knowledge, expertise, technology and artistry. Looking at the end result, something so familiar blinds us to the not-so-familiar skills required to produce it. However, despite all that, despite the apparent familiarity we might feel with this character, Inevitably, we still remain in the dark as to what he saw and what he understood. The remains in the lake speak to violent lives and violent ends. They display evidence of blunt force trauma in both male and female skulls, blows to the backs of head in females, blows to the top of the head in males. Many of the wounds show signs of healing and so are not the final cause of death. What on earth was going on with these people, bearing in mind they were mobile or semi-sedentary groups subsisting by hunting, fishing and gathering? Is this evidence of some kind of ritual or conflict over hunting grounds? Or is it something a lot more complex, which is indeed what the oddities and the idiosyncrasies of this find point to? However much we feel we could know this person, we can never know what he knew. How can we, in our settled 21st century ways, even begin to fathom his way of life? Is it hubris to even try? Well, maybe. But perhaps what we do know of his experience can remind us not to be so complacent in our civilised ways. Perhaps it can remind us to be aware of what we humans are capable of if we scratch the surface a bit too deeply. <laughs>